is also a go. Dope. Are we live on YouTube, or how does that work? Not live on YouTube. Um, so it just records it, and then so what I do we'll is sync the video. Are we live anywhere? To the sound. So not live anywhere. Okay. Yeah, We're live. So live in our own NBC. minds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if we say anything stupid, we can just cut it out. Yeah, please. But we, we've never said anything stupid. No. <laughs> uh, this podcast. In four years, <laughs> zero stupid things. Did we do a drinking with the crabs episode? Did I, we haven't yet. No, that's in the works um, for sure. We want to. Definitely yeah, an option. That needs to happen. I haven't seen them. The stupid uh, things will be said. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen them do Whiskey with the Crabs in a while. No, they haven't done Are it. Are they still doing it? Their, co- their cousin was producing it, I think. Okay. And uh, once he left, because he moved there away, we they're like, well, <laughs> we're not going to do it. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they did something else. but yeah. yeah. It was quality, though. But... We've been recording. I think this is a great discussion. This yeah, is a good start. Just walking right into it. We <laughs> have go. Uh, Eddie the Eagle Ratledge back on the podcast. Happy to be here, everybody. It is good to have you back. And I still is this like, the second or third time. This is the second because the first time we had him on was when I messed up the recording. Yeah. And I put it onto the computer. Thought I did. Put in the wrong file. Cleared the memory card. Then I went back and I was like, oh my I god, remember. I put the wrong file. It's our on the only computer. lost episode, I think. Only lost episode. I thought <laughs> I you found so it bad. though. Because it was going. So I found it, I went back through, but it came back. And because I had to like resurrect this thing from the dead. And w- I guess when you resurrect like an audio or video file, it comes back like pretty jacked up. <laughs> and it sounded like we were all just speaking to each other underwater. Okay. It was, and I was like, I can't run it. And no. I felt so bad because it was so good. It was a funny one. You were yeah. awesome. Well, you went shirtless. You were levitating. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It was awesome. That was epic. You, we got high expectations for you uh, this episode, which I know he already brought up expectations. The thief of joy. All right. And you had so many like one-liners like that. I still remember that. And me and Delaney still talk about like whenever something good happens unexpectedly, we just say bonus pancakes. <laughs> Bonus pancakes. <laughs> I don't know how many people have heard the story, but I can tell it. I would love to, because for our listeners' context, last time we had uh, Ed on was pretty shortly after you and Rafu won uh, AVP San Francisco. Mm. Um, and 2018, you, about a decade ago, pandemic time. Yes, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, and, right. uh, but you, and you guys were rolling. Like, it's not like you just stopped at San Francisco. You came back, you made another semi in Hermosa. Like, you guys yeah, were Yeah, we formidable. went first, third, fifth, third, which, like, that's definitely the best four tournaments of my career, back to back to back. Yeah. Um, yeah, had a really special time with him at the end of that season. Yeah. Uh, that was really a reflection of two things. I started the season with Eric Zahn, and um, I am not triborn. I am not in the gym 70 hours a week. <laughs> I am not just grooming myself to be the greatest volleyball player in the, in the world's history. Like, that's not me. Like, I love the game, I love playing it, but I have, I, I think I have more balance in my life than mm-hmm. you. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, Anyway, um, I started the season with Eric Zahn, and Eric Zahn did not have a lot of balance in his life because he was training seven times a day, yeah. like, mm. and he was making me train hard, and that was good. Like, <laughs> um, there is, you know, that that might have been the best I was ever playing because I was really physically strong. I, w- I had, you know, a zillion reps, and... You know, that whole preseason time from January to May is clutch for me. Like, if I've put in a good January through May, you know, I've got a good chance to make some noise in the season. And I'm going to try to do that this year because, hey, we got a tour coming up. Yes. But anyway, (laughs) back to bonus pancakes. Lots of caveats. Um, Eric and I, you know, started the year and we worked out really hard. And um, two events in, he dumps me course uh because you know just like he did in 2017 he dumps me after two events <laughs> good finishes in those two events i think yeah. we went like fifth and seventh or something yeah. um but yeah and yeah picked up rafu had a couple out of had an event or two where we took a ninth or th- you know something medium uh but then all of a sudden it clicked you know rafu and i had enough reps together he was playing really well uh, I was strong and playing really well, and you know that's you know the rest is history. I had the best four events in my career by far, 
uh, at that point. So um, we won San Francisco. And, um, you know, that's, you know, definitely a, a really, it's a life highlight. It, it kind of divided time. There was before and after San yeah. Francisco. <laughs> right. You know, it was Eddie the lovable loser, and then all of a sudden, oh, <laughs> that's an AVP champion walking on the strand there. Right. And, you know, people look at you differently, and I mm -hmm. think about myself differently after having climbed that mountain and gotten to the top and stood there for an afternoon. Um, it's pretty cool. Wouldn't mind doing it again. I don't know if I am going to put in or have access to the partner that I need for that. You know, yeah. it's... It's really rare to come upon somebody who's skilled enough to go and win a championship with you um, like that. And I, I hope, you know, whoever I'm playing with this year is that. But I intend to put the work in. You know, there were a lot of things that went in there. I've got a strength and conditioning coach who's back in my life now, which is great. Back to bonus pancakes. Played real well. Uh, won five straight matches there, including the final. Um, and, you know, just really was in the moment the whole time, you know, in a way that I've really never been before, just yeah. really present with all of it. And um, so we win and I sign, you know, every autograph. I run around the stadium, sign every <laughs> autograph, do every interview. Um, and Conover gave me advice. Jeff Conover is, uh, he was the tournament director. He's high in the AVP and has been forever. Um, and he's like, hey, do everything, you know, enjoy this moment, take a picture of yourself with, uh, you know, with the event in the background, holding up your trophy and your skateboard. Skateboard was special. I bought it on that Thursday doing the most Californian thing I could possibly do. I took an <laughs> Uber in San Francisco to buy something that I found off Craigslist for 20 bucks. It was a Amazing. longboard skateboard. $30 of, Uber. Uh, it was a five dollar Uber. Oh, five. It was <laughs> now super that Uber cheap. Probably be thirty. Yeah. <laughs> a quarter of your board, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? Uh, <laughs> no, five dollar Uber. Because um, Rafu showed up at the hotel with a skateboard, and I'm like, it's a half mile to the event site. I want a skateboard, mm -hmm. so I went and I bought one. That was Thursday <laughs> night. Yeah, rode the skateboard to and from the event. Took the picture of myself after the event with the skateboard and the trophy, um, and. Uh, then proceeded to call for an Uber to get me to the airport. And that Uber pulled up like 20 minutes later and then pulled away about 10 seconds later without me in it because he, upon arriving, found out that I wanted to go to Oakland Airport and he did not want to go to Oakland and he was out of there. And I'm like, oh crap, I've already changed my flight a couple of times because I'm running a, a showcase event in California or in Huntington Beach yeah. at the same time. And I was anticipating losing to, you know, Doherty in the in the semifinals and getting on a flight and going and running my event. Yeah. Nope. I've I've pushed it all the way back. I'm on the last possible flight home, and um, so I call for another Uber, and he gets there 20 minutes later, whatever, and he takes me, and we are like really late. Yeah. Like we are like you know, he is breaking every traffic law. He is cutting in front of people. He has learned my story about how I've just won the first tournament of my career and it's the biggest day and all I want to do is get home and spend uh, the evening with my wife and best friend who happened to be staying at my place at that point. And he is committed to this cause. He is on board <laughs> Team Ed to get me there. He's driving. He's, and it's great. Um, it's everything an Uber ride should be. <laughs> a little bit of dangerous, yeah, a little right. bit of spine tingling. I could die. <laughs> He got me to the airport. Um, of course, I'm, uh, you know, carry-on only. Never fly with, uh, with bags. That's for suckers. Uh, I'm riding my skateboard through the terminal to get to my gate on time. I'm the last person on that plane, um, you know, barging through the aisles. Um, uh, the, you know, the trophy is apparent. The uh, <laughs> flight attendants... Um, are are keen to you know bring me margarita after margarita so i'm <laughs> sauced on the plane as i should be um get off the plane sauced get home watch um watch the the final and the semi-final with my best friend david fisher love you he's in uh, north carolina now okay great human being special he he helped me and came up huge that day because uh 
he drove uh, my truck and the trailer that runs like all my volleyball stuff, like all over to the event uh, that morning. Um, shoot, we're all about caveats. Let's go back yeah, to that morning. Sure. It's 6 a.m. Yeah. And I'm supposed to play a semifinal in a couple of hours. Right. And I get a phone call and it's Dave and he's driving my truck except for he's not driving my truck anymore because my truck and the trailer have become decoupled. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The trailer is on the ground. The hitch is on the ground. He has no idea what to do. And it's 6 a.m., and I'm like, this is some adversity. <laughs> Quote Eric again. Um, and so it's 6 a.m. I'm supposed to play this thing. He's down there trying to be a good friend and bring this trailer and this, uh, this truck. And... Good thing this happened to me two weeks earlier, and I knew just what to do. So I called AAA, and I'm like, okay, I need you to bring a, a tow truck that's got a, a jack because we need to jack this thing up so we can get it high enough so we can raise it and get it back up on the trailer because we still got an event to run over there. Right. Um, so, yeah, that happened. Um, and, of course, in true ad adversarial fashion <laughs> the uber driver has or the uh, the the AAA driver has the wrong address and he's arrived somewhere in Huntington that's 20 <laughs> minutes away from my actual address and so i have to get on the phone with AAA guy and he is like you know circling back to get to my truck and my yeah. trailer and my best friend who are so that takes all the time in the world, and the event's going to have a minorly late start, and that sucks, but nah, eh, it's fine. Um, so he gets the truck back and together with the trailer. The event goes on largely without a hitch because I've got a couple of people that can help with that stuff. They didn't need me anyway. Um, and my semi goes off without a hitch. Like, we kind of blast uh, Ryan Doherty, and I think it was Billy Allen he was playing with. We... we you know, that's a team that I probably would have lost to nine times out of ten, but somehow we beat them. Yeah. <laughs> um, somehow, meaning Ralph, who served like ten aces, <laughs> uh, as helpful. he is known to do. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'm going to have to change another flight, okay? And, you know, won the final. And So I'm uh, getting off the plane to, to go home, and that Uber goes off without a hitch. I don't remember anything about that Uber ride, as I shouldn't, because I'm sauced. <laughs> <laughs> Um, get home, watch the final, uh, or watch the semi, and I'm like, dude, I know I need to eat. I'm kind of a little bit hungry, but nothing sounds good. Yeah. And so I call, uh, you know, Grubhub up, and I'm like, what can I get that has breakfast? Breakfast kind of sounds good. So yeah. IHOP is still serving pancakes and scrambled eggs <laughs> and bacon, and so we order a plate of each of those things for each of us. And... Um, you know, finish watching the final, eat all our food or what I thought was all of our food. Yeah. Because this is where the bonus comes in. <laughs> that is a microcosm for all of this. <laughs> um, everybody's gone off to bed. I am still sitting on the couch just kind of going, wow, what a day. I'm not going to believe this for about a week. Yeah. It's <laughs> going to take a while to set in, but I know there's one good thing left to come tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be a good citizen right now. I'm not going to leave this coffee table filled with, like, IHOP trash. I'm going to be a good citizen of this household. I'm not going to be that egotistical guy that doesn't have to do anything on his big day. I'm going to take this trash, and I'm going to put it in that trash can. So I take it into the kitchen. And as I'm about to put it away, I'm like, you know, gosh, I still got a little appetite left. But, you know, I, you know I'll, I'll quench that appetite upstairs in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go to put everything in the trash compactor, and this one bag feels heavy still. And I'm like, what? Do they have to give us extra syrups? Is there extra butter in there? Should I maybe put that in the fridge? No. Look in, and it's a plate of pancakes, and it's perfect. <laughs> and it's the perfect plate of pancakes. There's enough syrup and butter to go with it, too. And I smash that extra <laughs> bonus plate of pancakes. And it's the perfect microcosm for a man who was happy playing at a high level, Never really conceived that he was going to win an event and, you know, honestly played the events because he loves to play the events. I'm talking about myself in the third person, is that cool? <laughs> yes. Um, but it's the microcosm for that. Like, I wasn't expecting to win an event and, you know, put myself into those hallowed halls, like, of, of ABP champions. Like, mm -hmm. that's not, you know, I was the lovable loser and that's cool. Um, but... 
I got it done. Yeah. And uh, bonus pancakes. Bonus pancakes. On a career of kind of an awesome time. Yeah. So thank you for letting me share the bonus pancake story with everybody out there. Thank you for telling it again. Okay. I hope I did all right. Second time around. I okay. <laughs> a couple little details here and there I tried to add. So um, yeah, if I ever win a tournament, um, pancakes it is. Uh, I won fuds this year. Uh, pancakes? Uh, I did not have pancakes. I went to not Waffle House. Oh, Waffle. Eh, that works. Yeah. I mean, it's Waffle pretty House similar. Is fantastic. Dude. All-star special? So Come good. On. I don't think I've had it. <laughs> oh, it's so we good. Don't have, do we have it in California? No, it's zero uh, Waffle House. Definitely don't here. have it in It's Hawaii. like a southern, There's like, southeast There's one thing. on the, like, between, like, I've Arizona, between them. Phoenix and, like, Tucson. Like, if you get that far... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> no, it's I've not seen worth them. the drive. I've seen them on uh, our trips. All right, AVP Atlanta, you can probably find a Waffle House gotcha. pretty close. Not that I'd recommend. We'll win the tournament, and, and in my yeah. honor, I need yeah. you to go get waffles or pancakes. Yeah. Breakfast right. is really the right thing to do. And, Happy to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's try to make the finals that. together and uh, all end up, whoever, you know, loser right. buys. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, loser Everyone buys uh, Waffle pancakes. House. Or, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I love it. Um, so that was 2018. And one thing you mentioned that I'm, I'm curious about is you said that that was the most present you'd ever been playing beach volleyball. Yep. Um, what did that look like for you? Because you have this, not like, you're an entertainer out there. But, so what does present look like for you? Because I think a lot of people watching, you're always interacting with the crowd, you're having fun, they might think that that looks distracted, but I feel like that's just your flow state. Right. right. That's the thing, like... If you make a plan to interact with the crowd and then come back to yourself and then go play that point and then come back to yourself, if you can make that plan to go back and forth, the more often you make that little plan, that little two-step, three-step plan and adhere to it, the more in the moment you are. Yeah. Because as long as you're on that little plan, then you're present. You're doing the thing that you set out to do and you're not truly distracted. Um, it's very easy to go off script and, and forget that, hey, I was gonna come back to my breathing before I go back to like actual playing. Yeah. And in that moment where I come back to my playing, I'm gonna go through the cues that I want in my head for this next play. So it's very easy to do that, but with practice, and I say practice as the operative word, if you're practicing meditation, um, <laughs> it, it makes it a lot easier to do that. So that's mm, a yeah. big part of you know, any good pro athlete's regimen is yeah. practicing being in the moment, coming back to the, you know, coming back to the task at hand. Yeah. Almost every uh, high-level athlete that I've heard of, at least these days. Nowadays. Yeah. You, these days, for sure. Um, uses mindfulness, yes. whether they say it or not. Like when we bring them on the show, usually they, they have used mindfulness. And I feel like um, you either do one or two things at like throughout your growth process as an athlete. At some point or another, you get involved with the crowd and the, the things going on outside and it ruins your game because you can't bring yourself back. Or you shut everything out and you don't interact with the crowd, you don't interact with other things going on, which I think can take away from like the entertainment value of it. Phil! <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Not right. I, I exactly. have something in my throat there. Uh. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, but like, yeah, having that plan of I'm going to open myself to what's going on around during the match, but I have to bring myself back for every point is a really good balance, I think. And I've, I mean, I for sure... I've dabbled with both, obviously, throughout my career. It's but more every fun. time that yeah, but it's every a time lot that I fun. for sure, every time that I've went out and like did the more Casey Patterson like stuff, which or Ed Ratledge like stuff, not very different by the way. Uh, uh, I was distracted, or like when I got into it with other people, I didn't bring myself back in, and I was like, that's not for me, and I really closed myself off. So I'm going to be in the zone the whole time. And then over the years, I realized it's not really like putting my true authentic self out there. It's kind of draining. It's not as fun. And now I've kind of found that balance or I'm working on that balance of being able to. Authentic self right. is where 
that rational part of your brain meets that emotional part of your brain. And trying to ignore the fact that 5,000 people are watching you is not true to your authentic self. Mm -hmm. Like, they're there. Right. So trying to ignore that fact, like, you're shutting a piece of you that needs to be acknowledged down. And you're not going to be your strongest when you, you know, ignore truth. Yeah. Like, so, I, uh, I like to talk to the crowd because when I do it, I speak from here. You have to. You're not going to be heard unless you speak from here. Right. And, and for those that are listening to the podcast and not looking at YouTube, I'm gesturing to my belly. Like you speak from your belly and it has a different resonance and it connect, it connects with other people for sure. They feel that like it's a deeper sound and it actually is, is felt and heard like physically felt like when there is a deeper sound. Yeah. Um, it's a fun part of sound is that it kind of interacts not just with eardrums, but with the body at large, especially when it's a deeper, lower sound. Hmm. Yeah. And when when I yell to a crowd, it's from here, it's from my belly, and it reminds me of all of me, and it, it makes me feel in the moment in, in that I'm coming from a true self point. And I try to do it in a way that's a little bit vulnerable, too, because, again, if I just hit a ball a mile out of bounds, like, I'm feeling stupid about that. Right. right? Like, I'm feeling embarrassed about that. Yeah. And the invulnerable <laughs> doesn't want to acknowledge that. But the vulnerable is the stronger self. Like this is uh, Brene Brown, you know. Mm -hmm. we, we know that the vulnerable is the stronger. Yeah. And there's a certain amount of strength that you project when you're willing to be vulnerable out there. Mm. So, look, I'm doing my best out here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and that's, that's what I got. It takes and, pressure off of you too. And it I takes think. pressure off of you. I've noticed that... Um, when I've had my best tournaments, I, I'm like, I laugh at my mistakes. Mm. Hit it out, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. That was irritating. But like in a joking way, like, sure. wow, ding dong, what the hell is that? I'm like, but I'm not mad about it or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no. And it's, that's a hard thing to, to force, but that kind of goes back to what, what you're saying. It's vulnerability. Yeah. When you realize I'm not perfect, I'm yeah. not going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something that the athlete, especially a high-level athlete, you know, can grapple with like hey I can win this tournament without being perfect and I just got to try to be closer to perfect than everybody else <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yeah right have you read uh you mentioned Brene Brown did you read her book uh the gift of imperfection I have not I've heard a few podcasts and I you know her ideas vibe with me for sure yeah well I mean if you've read really if you've read anything by Brene Brown you you have a good concept of what the gift of imperfection is but that the more you just embrace it you know, your own flaws and whatever, and you're just like, oh, you know, if I miss a, a line shot out of bounds, well, everyone does that from Phil to Anders to Christian, April Ross misses them. You're like, it's sure. not really bad. So you hit it 40 feet out. Like, yeah. Does everyone do that? <laughs> I hit it out of the stadium on a high line. It's really weird. <laughs> Who knew? Really high line. Yeah. But that kid got a sweet souvenir. Yeah. <laughs> An optics ball. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a good time to take a Shut break up. and talk all about Wilson Optics. Wilson Optics? I oh, just talked sure. to them Actually, today. They yeah. are doing uh, personalized names I saw on those that. balls. I'm like, where's mine? <laughs> no, Can seriously. I get one that says you Volio know, Seal? We all, we all have our, uh, you know, our Sharpie, yeah. Sharpied in names. It's going to be baller when we all have like our fully lasered in. It's a loving names. thing to do to make sure that you have a Sharpie in your bag so that anybody who doesn't have their name on their ball can have their right. name oh, on their ball. <laughs> the, so the ball that you wrote on years and years ago. It's now um, up in East Beach, like, right? Yeah. You gave it to Katie? It was, yeah. I was, um, it was like two generations of balls ago. The white one with the fixing? No, it was <laughs> not, that, not that old. <laughs> not that long ago. It was the one, it was just like, it was white with just like the yellow stripe horizontal. Yeah, okay. Um, and so yep, Ed yep. had, uh, I was practicing with Ed and I had an unmarked ball. Mm -hmm. Of course I did. And Ed wrote uh, Travis, but he spelled it T-R-A-V-U-S. In really Travis. big, like, sloppy handwriting. And it was just, that ball is legendary. 
And um, and then I ended up giving it to Katie Spieler, and she uses it for her kids at uh, East Beach in uh-huh. Santa Barbara. Uh-huh. And she'll send me a picture every time it's used. And it just <laughs> <runs> my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, I've done it to someone else too, uh, and and my policy is this: like, time number one, I'm going to give you a shot to like get it right. And it, but if I see you on the beach with that unmarked ball again, my sharpie's coming out, and your <laughs> near name is being misspelled. <laughs> In, in the most preschooler way possible. I think everyone should do it on purpose. Just come to Ed's practice with a bag full of unmarked balls and see what you get. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with Tri's ball because I don't know how you true. Yeah. You just become a tro. Mm. I think tro is... You can put a Y in, but that doesn't change it enough. Well, yeah. tree. Nobody's going to know whose ball it is if you change it. Tree a, a would be full, pretty funny. I might just letter. make it try hard. <laughs> tree, yeah. <laughs> try hard. <laughs> try hard. Yeah, um, that works. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Kevin Valela had uh, had that, and he became Kevon. Kevon. And then this gets really funny. Kevin Valela was practicing with a new guy, and he had his bag of balls out there, and the one is spelled Kevon. <laughs> now Kevin Valela <laughs> has an oddly spelled name. Yeah. Not really the first one because it's like every other Kevin. Right. But Valela, that's a little weird. It's tricky. And so the guy's like, "Hey, I really like practicing with you, Kevin." Can I get your number and put it in my phone? And Kevin's like, yeah, but it's spelled a little weird. And he's like, yeah, I know. I already put it in K-E-V-U-N. <laughs> <laughs> His contacts. So, That's amazing. Yeah, so it's propagating. I like this. But it honestly is an act of love. Like, yeah. I don't want you to lose that ball. It's right. going to get stolen. Everyone loves playing with Wilsons. And when they find a new unmarked one. Yeah. Which goes back to why you should go to Wilson.com. And get yourself <laughs> a... Professionally marked ball. Discount code Sandcast dash twenty. Yeah, I think I got to. Uh, Wilson's okay. gonna have like Stealing five discount here. Yeah, yeah, I don't what, know what, what, what it your is. Discount off code. Ah, shoot, I don't know what it is offhand. <laughs> Ed, Ed the eagle flies high. <laughs> Check out Ed's Instagram. He'll yeah, throw it I'll, up. I'll put it put up there in your bio point. or something. Yeah. Did you see that uh, Kev is he's moving to the UK? Wow. Yeah. He works for Deep Mind. So Kevin's one of the most interesting people I know. He works for DeepMind, which yeah. is an AI company that is like, yeah, I sure hope it's good and not evil. Right. Yeah. <laughs> DeepMind <laughs> sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> they have like sequenced every protein known to like every protein that can happen. Like they have done things with artificial intelligence that's like you know beyond the realm of, you know what humans thought would ever be possible and they've done it already and like so he's in that so i'm glad i know somebody that when uh the computer overlords come <laughs> can ask for a special carve out to let me uh yeah yeah but yeah he's uh he's going to the uk why what's in the uh, is it a job thing is i think it... so i think he just had wanted to do it his wife's a nurse, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he called me. He was like, hey, I'm having a going away party next week. And this was um, maybe in October. Hmm. And I was like, well, where are you going? She says, London. <laughs> oh, hmm. all right. My wife's obsessed with London. She says it's the best city she's ever lived in. She was there for a um, while, right? But she's kind of a London kind of city kind of person. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, she lived there for a while. I think it's just gloomy a lot. Yeah. But it is a cool town. I, I had spent a day there, and it was... It's cool. It's vibey. Yeah. Not not my place, but cool to it's visit. It's big and yeah. sprawly from what I, I understand. People are cool, too. Yeah. yeah. I could never do with the weather there. I mean, Negative. I just, yeah, it's a hard no on anything worse weather than California. I'm all about upgrading my life, yeah. and uh-huh. that seems like a weather downgrade. And as, <laughs> as into being outdoors as I am, um, yeah. Oh, it's for sure. hard no on, yeah, on right. the British Isles. And you're, you're outdoors all the time. I mean, you mentioned sort of that kind of work-life balance you have between playing volleyball and coaching volleyball. Um, you've kind of you figured it out. Yeah, uh, I've got three or four adult classes a week that I run out outdoors. Um, several of those are at night, so I've actually got to like observe the moon and the stars a little bit. And is that at? Uh, you do that at Great Park. I do one class a week at Great Park. Probably going to start a second one uh, in the new year. Okay. Uh, I need to start promoting that. I'm glad you reminded me of that. <laughs> hey, anybody uh, in Orange County, South County, uh, hit me up if you want to learn to play. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, our Wednesday night class is great out there. I was there last night with a dozen or so folks that I teach each week. 
Um, got a couple in Huntington Beach as well. Um, yeah, and been thinking about a, uh, a new volleyball vacation kind of an idea. Okay. Um, and we were talking about this before the podcast actually started. Um, I love Hawaii. I, you know, I lived in Maui for two months last year, and it was great. Um, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was highly recommended if you ever <laughs> have that chance. Yeah. Um, thank you. There's ever a global pandemic. It was great because there was like no COVID there. It was yeah. right when we were in California surging, yeah. and like there was no vaccine. And I'm just like, I don't want to have made it almost all the way to the vaccine and not like you know make it and get COVID and not be able to taste and smell things for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have friends who are like that, and that sucks. Bummer. That's a lousy wow. way to live life, not right. being able to taste things. Yeah, yeah. like Kona. Do we are we still sponsored by Kona? Yeah, we should are. We be, should we be plugging Kona. them? Yeah, we're okay. plugging everything today. Not be able Kona. to smell your monster. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, I would not be able to smell the, the uh, purple passion. Purple passion. <laughs> <laughs> not sure I want to smell your purple passion. <laughs> uh, anyway, back to the new business idea. Um, like mini curated pro volleyball vacations, where you know. A given pro goes and spends a weekend in Honolulu, plays with the locals there and the uh, the professional liaison. I mean, I imagine myself in this role more times than not. But if you really want to, you know, pay whatever tries fee is to fly out to Hawaii with you and your wife and two of your friends and, you know, hang out in Airbnb for a weekend and pass on some knowledge. Yeah. Want to learn from me for a weekend, you know, learn, you know, some of my tips and tricks and get to know the locals who play down at Queens Beach and get some games with them and just kind of a, like a very mini volleyball vacation. Like there's, you know, Tom Davenport does a nice job at his volleyball vacations. They're maxi, you know, he's got, you know, hundreds of people involved yeah. in those, but a really smaller scale. Cause you know, I, one of the things about being kind of marginally famous is that you get to know a zillion people super superficially, super yeah. superficially. Like, and I don't want those relationships. I don't want a relationship that's not like deep where I know what makes you tick and understand mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Like I wanna like, cause I can't do any good for you in that kind of a relationship. I wanna know what really like makes, makes you see the world the way you see it um, I want to, and like, so I want, I want a deeper relationship if I'm going to have any relationship yeah. with somebody. Um, and so this is kind of one of those things where like, if Ed Ratledge seems interesting to you and you want to know what makes him tick, you know, and you've got the, the coin to make it worth his while, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and you want to get better at volleyball because I can definitely do that after yeah. 22 years on the pro tour and being a teacher and a coach the whole time. Like I know how to make people. Yeah. Hey, I know how to make people better. You know, I've been teaching, you know, NARPs, non-athletic regular people for <laughs> like my pretty much my entire pro career. Yeah. Um, and so that seems like, that, that's a that's an avenue that I want to like investigate whether there is a market for like a small curated volleyball vacation whether it's a week or a weekend you know in a cool place like that where there is a group that plays and you know you want to get to know a given pro you know during that time and you know you work it out and I just th I think that you know, it harkens back to what makes our sport so cool is like all the fan and pro athlete, you know, interaction that that happens, you know, and, you know, doing it a little deeper level where, you know, you have some drinks in the evening and like get to play and get to coach a little bit. Yeah. Seems cool. One of the, the cool things about uh, Tom's vacations were so I did one in uh, Cabo mm. and we had there were I think 80 vacationers there and we had there were six uh, pros and it was really interesting what happened is it was like almost like high school in a way where like the people like I'm I don't really go out late into the night like midnight yeah, it's like either. way yeah. past my cap so like I sort of naturally gravitated towards the morning people. Like I'd be up with them at six in the morning. We'd be playing games and whatever. But Doble, on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny because like Doble, I'm guessing he's a kind of a night owl. 
Well, we had Troy and Baranek and Gina. Like, they stayed out. They were the late crew in Hartong. And then it was, like, me and Trambley. Um, Trambley was kind of a, a tweener. Mm. And then, so I was, like, with the morning people. And you sort of end up getting, like, I had, like, the ten people that I was, like, close <laughs> with on that trip. And then okay. Baranek and Troy had their people. And yeah. You kind of, you get to know everyone. Right. But then you do, I did end up getting, like, pretty close with some people. Like, one of the ladies, uh, Kirsten West, she runs a, um, a wedding florist uh, sort of business in Ohio. Mm-hmm. And I, like, once me and Tim qualified for um, Brazil, the four-star, I was like, this is, like, a $3,000 flight. Uh, I'm just looking for any sponsors. And she's like, yeah, I I'll got sponsor you. you. How like, cool is that? This is amazing. Right. And during COVID, uh, there were actually, like, a couple of people who love those volleyball vacations who were like, they can't do anything official. So they actually were talking about that exact same idea you had. We were like, right. if you want to come out, we'll pay your flight. Um, don't really have any money to pay you there, but it's a free trip to Florida. I don't sure. know. Can't can't do that one, but it's an awesome idea. So right. I think there's a market there. Right. So, yeah, um, love it. Uh, reach out on social media if you think that's something that you know you have a group that you know you could make it fly. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Love it. So you've been playing pro for 22 years. 22 years. Wow. Started uh, first full year on tour was uh, 01. Okay. Is that um, half your life? It is. I am 44, and that wow. was 22 years-ish ago. That's amazing. Pro for half your life. Pro for half my life. Holy. And I don't really want to stop. I mean, yeah. yeah. I just, like, I don't experience a whole bunch of pain when I play, and, you know, that goes to, like, kind of the whole learner mindset that I like to embody. Like, every time I'm around a good trainer, I'm asking questions and trying to learn about... It's always, a th- here's another good edism. It's the thing before the thing. And it's usually the thing before the thing before the thing. <laughs> so, you know, your knee hurts. Okay, why does that hurt? Well, how well is your ankle moving? Right. And how well is your hip moving? Mm-hmm. And are those, you know, contributing? And, okay, well, your ankle's fine, but your hip's kind of jacked up. And, well, why is that? Right. Well, you know, what kind of innervation uh, do you have to your hip? Oh, that's not firing very well. You've got kind of, oh, well, why is that? Like, Hips connected to my shoulder. Like, yeah, well, that, that a lot, of it, a lot of it is yeah. connected to your digestion. Interesting. You know, you put bad stuff here, and I'm you know, motioning to my gut. Um, you, you put stuff that's, you know, inflammatory to your gut, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's something that you particularly have a little allergy to or it's just making you bloated, like that's pushing against all kinds of musculature around there. And that can cut off, you know, nerve signal to parts of your hip that you need to make sure that your knee doesn't hurt. <laughs> uh, it can, you know, cause you to, you know, load differently so that you're kind of keeping weight away from that one side that is more impacted by the, you know, the digestive issue that you're having. Like, it's important to be mindful of what you eat in that way, but it's difficult because it's hours after you eat that that gas from that burrito that, you know, you have a little bean allergy and that, you know, that's really blowing you up on one side in particular and it's causing this cascade of symptoms like everybody has a duty to their body to be mindful of what is good for it and bad for it and um and i take that very seriously in my own body like i have a duty to protect this thing yeah so I mean, what, it listens to me. You? I move it around and it listens to me. It's great. I should probably look after it. <laughs> <laughs> what works for you? What, um, uh, what kinds of things do you feed it that um, keeps you playing at 44 and at a high level? Right. Um, yeah, I wish I had a whole bunch of sponsors Pancakes to plug here. And, uh, <laughs> I want to thank IHOP. And, uh, <laughs> Maple syrup by the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Elf. Uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Kenny Kane's Kenny um, I didn't even realize I was referencing Elf, but it is the holidays. So. <laughs> Spaghetti with uh, <laughs> syrup. Two, two liter gallon of coke. <laughs> Coming right up. Love it. Um, 
Well, yeah, sugar's bad. Um, I really feel like it should be on the Schedule One list of narcotics for uh, for our government. <laughs> like it is the gateway drug. Yeah, um, excess sugars and bad sugars. Yeah, yeah. I'm addicted, as is just about everybody else. Um, but if we can be mindful of that addiction, hopefully we can control it and not let ourselves get too inflamed. Mm-hmm. Um, Dairy was a concern to me if I'm going to have anything dairy. I try to cut most of it out, but I'm going to have a lactate with it. You know, the nice thing about the stuff that I have problems with is that there's some antidotes, you know, yeah. like, um, you know, dairy is a problem. So I'll have a lactate and that really helps in, you know, me to not get gassy after it. And, you know, I just, um, I try not to do milkshakes, but, you know. Sometimes, Sometimes when you're you playing for milkshakes, milkshakes. <laughs> that's right. another plug. I got you there. Uh, I appreciate you, Ed. <laughs> um, Available on Amazon. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Available on, yeah, that's where it's at. Okay. That's where it's at. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, so I do eat a lot of beans and rice, and, you know, I'll have a, a beano with, with my bean uh, and, you know, my chipotle bowl or whatever it is. Um, you know, greens and reds are, are important. I make sure I have in the morning, I'll have like a, a shake with some like greens and reds to make sure I get enough antioxidants. Antioxidants are great, especially, you know, this time of year where, you know, you're liable to get cold or flu or yeah. worse. Um, make sure you're doing those so your immune system's healthy and happy. Um, and then, yeah, just being mindful. Uh, I did do a, I haven't gotten it back, but I did a food allergy panel. Uh, oh, nice. recently, you know, so I'm going to find out the obscure stuff that my body may or may not like. I think that's important. Um, I did, I did one of those and, uh, and so it came back with some of the standard stuff that was, you know, dairy, not great. Right. Gluten wasn't great. I was like, all right, no real surprises there. But one of the things that was really high on the list was actually uh, tuna oh. for me. And I love tuna, but when I was living with Eric in the garage, we made a pact one day where um, we weren't going to like cook anything or, or eat out anywhere, so we just had to get stuff from traders. Well, we lived off canned tuna. It's kind of the cheapest for, like, protein. Eight straight days, and we got so sick. We yeah. had like <laughs> like a pretty decent mercury poisoning, <laughs> and I come to find out that like good adversity my body there. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> oh jeez. It was terrible. I was like Eric, I feel awful, and he's like, bro, I've been puking all day. No <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, so that can happen. So don't eat tuna for eight straight days, especially when you're yeah, like once or twice a week, something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know. It sounds like that you just pay really good attention to your body and kind of just keep learning my wife says that like i i'm a bit of a delicate flower when it comes to my body um but and that's true Uh, but yes i pay a lot of attention to it Mm. and um yeah i uh i i think that's important i mean we all have a duty to it like you know you're gonna let yourself go okay well what's what's causing you to put food before your own physical like well-being hmm let's take that back a bit you know are you you know are you healthy psychologically and the answer for 99 percent of us is not entirely like it's really hard to be healthy psychologically in yeah you know in a time where we've got covid and you know partisan divide and like instagram god social zuckerberg die please (laughs) (laughs) that won't stop it ed yeah i know Uh, well it's just, you know, it's, it's human nature um, to kind of, I mean, what do I want to say We're here? going against our kind of uh, natural human instincts, I guess, you know, like obviously we've evolved, but like the la- this technological advance or age that we're in is like, yeah. Jumping a, ten steps it's a past big and really out of fast. like us yeah. being a part of nature and right. all that. Yeah, it's a big change really fast. Like yeah. we had big changes before with the whole agrarian society and the printing press and that. Right. Those are big changes, but like TV. what we've done in the last 30, 40, 50 years, like that's oh, absurd. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, floating around from place to place in cars and like. You know, having a miracle device that basically has the Library of Alexandria at your fingertips right. and being able to talk to it, like, these are big changes. Right. And we have not navigated those perfectly. And 
hopefully we will do a better job of that. I, I, I have a bright outlook for humanity. I yeah. think we're actually, you know, we're in a kind of a better, we at least have the potential to be in a better spot than we've ever been as a species. Yeah. If we get some of this balance right, one thing that makes, you know, makes me happy there is like, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we thought we were going to have population overload. And then all of a sudden, it's kind of leveled off. And mm. it looks like we're going to like plateau at like 10 billion people in the world. And then we might even have a decline from there. Like, that's really healthy that as a society or as a, uh, as a species, we're doing that. Like, because, yeah, we can't be 50 billion people on this planet like we can't do that right and so that gives me hope that like okay we've figured out birth control and like we're not to quote the pope you know mating like rabbits <laughs> and yeah we've we've subdued the earth we've taken it over you know that's not the quote i was picturing from coming from the pope <laughs> uh yeah, that was the newest pope <laughs> uh, nice. um yeah not not the older ones um and I don't think he really came out in favor of birth control. It would go against a whole lot of precedent right. for him to do that. But <laughs> he's like, yeah, maybe it's not so bad that we kind of level off here, guys. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, this is an environmentally conscious pope. He's like, yeah, there's only so many resources. Like, right. we need to live in harmony with nature. We're the stewards of the earth, not the conquerors of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean... I think you, Travis, get a lot of enjoyment out of like getting back to nature. Like yeah. I see on, on your posts sometimes that how much you enjoy Yosemite and how good yeah. that is for you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I would encourage everybody. It's it's kind of cliche, but go find your out yourself outdoors. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's really the, hard to find yourself it's indoors. The biggest thing. I mean, family, like being around your family and whatnot. But other than that. Well, being, try being like around in terms your family of, outdoors. Go camping. Whoa. Yeah. No, yeah. Dang. <laughs> Revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we went to Joshua Tree over Thanksgiving week, Sunday through Wednesday. It was great. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend Joshua Tree? Everyone recommends it, but then when I look it up, I, I love water. I'm just like yeah. Yosemite mm -hmm. with waterfalls and rivers and everything, and everywhere we go that Not I love. A lot of like, water. Sequoia's got water, but... Joshua, Joshua Tree's Tree. pretty dry. Like, what, what do we do in Joshua Tree? You climb rocks. Why is it great? Okay. Rocks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a different, different, cool, different, different kind of experience. Beauty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been there, yeah. but I do the same thing. A lot thing. of people Looking choose camping, to do like, drugs. That just looks like rocks and desert. Yeah. Eh, I'm out. Yeah, I need a tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Joshua Tree has a lot of cool rocks to like climb around, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of quiet, like very quiet. And I, uh, yeah, I mentioned you don't even the, have the wind in the trees like you would other places. Yeah, right? yeah, it's really, really quiet. And so when a drug-induced lunatic comes running through your campsite at 2 in the morning, <laughs> laughing hysterically and mani maniacally like for a, for a full hour. Better than angry. <laughs> <laughs> you? you went there. <laughs> oh, boy. No, we, we didn't know him. Uh, just, uh, just a rando was in our campsite, like in our campsite. <laughs> And uh, I'm looking over at the wife going, D should I go out and confront this maniac? <laughs> like, what is happening right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's got to stop, right? It's going to stop. It's been going on. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, climbing around on rocks, especially with kids, little kids, uh, my 11-year-old and his friends just bouldering. The rocks there are really cool. They've got a lot of, like, grip to them. So you can just clamber around on all these boulders and explore. And, yeah. You know, it's Cool hikes. Yeah. yeah. That's the, I mean, the thing about extremes. And, you know, we're a pretty polarized society right now. So we're just hitting all these extremes. But I think that when you go so far one way, that there's a, a bounce back. Yeah. And I think we're starting to see that where, like, when we were just stuck inside for so long, that was like extreme mm -hmm. indoors, where now all the national parks hit record attendance. Yep. Right after. Pendulum's got to swing that other way. And, like, real estate, people buying, instead of houses in cities, they're buying plots of land mm -hmm. out there. And I think we're starting to see this bounce back. And you mentioned... Mobile like, homes, RVs, yeah. surfboards. Like, you can't get foam anymore. Mm. Like, yeah. I was trying to get a custom board shaped, and it was going to take, like, four months or something, because the shapers can't get foam because so many people are buying surfboards. Wow. Yeah. 
it's this, this bounce back is it's, a good thing. it's kind of fun to see. And you mentioned mindfulness earlier where I think we all started to realize how much time we were staring at a screen. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, it's probably really important to get away from that. Yeah. And now we're seeing all this mindfulness stuff. And so I'm hopeful for society. I'm pretty optimistic that we're kind of seeing bounce backs in a lot of areas where people are just kind of starting to come back to reality a little bit. It'll all balance itself yeah. out. I mean, the buildings that we're stucking ourselves in are in nature. Like, Mother Nature is much bigger than just our little yeah. cities. That even if we're in a little bubble, like the Earth is gonna equalize itself if if we uh, do something too stupid. I think, yeah. like a pandemic. <laughs> I love this whole great resignation thing. People yeah. being like, you know what? I'm not doing this crappy job anymore. <laughs> Like, yeah. right. I love that. Like, yeah. we need that. Like, if this job is really that crappy, it should pay four times that much. Right. And there's a there's a good bit of freedom that people have been afforded by kind of the massive government government stimulus to be like to reorganize who gets paid what for what work. Yeah. You know? And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I really actually hope that um, we put our foot down and demand as a society a four day work week. Like, I don't think we should be doing 40 hours a week when we have robots that, and, and AI that can do a lot of this yeah. for us. Heck like yeah. we can enslave ourselves that way um, and make the very richest extremely, extremely richer and have even more power than, than they already have. Or hopefully we can collectively make it so that, you know, the, the lower classes get a, a share of it in and the share of it meaning they don't have to work quite as hard and they do get to spend more time at the things that matter like being outdoors with their family yeah. like four day work week that would be great yeah i think that's a big step toward that because how much work really does need to get done once you've got food and a place to live like right um and we've built enough houses mostly for us you know we need to build some more we need to keep doing some of that but mm-hmm. at what pace and you know food production okay we figured out how to do that pretty well um hopefully we can you know do the same thing we're doing with the electric grid which is kind of dispersing it a little bit having batteries in places so that you know a solar array here can power this little zone and hopefully we can do that with food where you know a lot more people grow some of their own so we're getting more nutrient rich you know food into people's lives mm-hmm. and they're living more quality lives like um, those are my aspirations for society. You know, yeah. I hope that that people value those and move towards those. You yeah. know, it, vote uh, for me. I'm going for president. <laughs> <laughs> when you're basically the mayor of Huntington Beach already. Kind words. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been really funny. Um, the majority of my work the past year has been with Volleyball World, um, the FIVB, and they're based in Switzerland. And they like they're when they take a weekend. Like, in America, if you're, like, off on the weekend, you're still, like, checking email and stuff right. and working, kind of. Like, they are off the grid. Cannot get in touch with them. And they go on what they call holiday, but they'll just be gone for, like, a month. Like, right now, like, if I try to get in touch with any of my editors of Volleyball World, it's probably not going to happen because they're just on holiday. Mm. And they're just, like, it's they take a very serious break. It's a hard and when, no. And when yeah. They, yeah, and when they work, they're working. And when they're not, they're not. And that's awesome. And that's God hard bless for me to for do. That. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I know. I need to do that more, I'm realizing. Especially right now without volleyball, it's like all the other things, the emails and all that. Like, I don't have the excuse to not. With, with volleyball, I'm like, sorry, volleyball is a priority. Right. Can't, can't answer that. Can't do this. Yeah. But now I'm like constantly checking and like social media, all that stuff. It's I'm all like, about oh. boundaries. The man doesn't want you to have boundaries. <laughs> yeah. You just set boundaries against the man. <laughs> yeah, tough. right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but with as far as volleyball goes, uh, you mentioned uh, that you're starting practice a little bit again. Um, do you have any plans for the upcoming season? I was hoping to get a little bit of info from you guys, the rumor mill about who's doing what with whom. I guess I, I don't know what's anything. happened at the top yeah. yet. And that, that shuffle could impact somebody like me a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. We were talking about it um, a few episodes ago, I think. and I listened to that one. Um, yeah, we just don't really... No, Casey like and Chase playing year? together again? Like I think Chase, Chase got my thought not. is that Chase is thinking international. Casey's not playing international. They would be a partnership right. if he was. 
I've reached out so, to Casey. I would love to be team entertainment for, oh, yeah. uh, for the that world. That would be fun. That would be wild. Yeah, he's <laughs> good sure. on the left. I'm a good enough blocker, in my yeah. opinion, oh, for sure. to play with him. Yeah. That would be um, awesome. And I feel like we could win tournaments together. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love for that to happen. Uh, realistically, I don't know if he can, uh, you know, if he if he can stomach the idea of playing with the weird <laughs> goofy lefty, but we'll make good things happen for sure. That would be fun to watch. It would be the first time in my career since like '04 that I was picked up by a player with like more kind of rating yeah. than me. Like I, I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I've been like really in the same exact tier, yeah. or uh, or in most of the cases. I've been like ranked quali- quantitatively right. with yeah. more points than the person who I play with. Which is really impressive, actually, when you think about it. I want uh, put that on my resume, you know, Casey Patterson. There we go. Um, I played with a qualifier. His name was Eric Zahn. Did he do better after he dumped me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I played with another qualifier. His name was Rafu. I won a tournament with him. Uh, <laughs> And did he do better than that after me? No. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm decent, yeah. you know? And when I put my mind to something and I have a team around me, you know, that's what I learned from Jake Gibb. He's all about team, 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 yeah. team, yeah. team. Um, you know, I have not had a great team around me for a lot of the years, but I do right now. I have that strength and conditioning coach, Sue Stanley. You're amazing. I hope I get to work with you the rest of my career. Um, she was with me, you know, in 2017, 2018, when I was, you know, so strong and so balanced. And hmm. she was gone the last couple of years, and now she's back. Yeah. And so I have that piece of my team. And, um, you know, she's great at nutrition, too. She's actually a nutritionist. Uh, nice. And, like, you know, she's, you know, helping me there, too. And... So that's a big piece of my team that's in place. And I just, you know, I feel like, you know, Skylar and I had a couple of really good tournaments. So I might be able to win a tournament with him, you know, if Rafu and, you know, I, I just feel like I've got the potential, you know, to, to do really well this year. Right. And, yeah. you know, it's. It's a good year to do that from, I mean, from and that's, what, it's, it's such rumors. a great time to still yeah. be playing. Like, yeah. You know, the, the whole Bally's thing, I just have such high hopes for what the ABP is going to be this year, next year, the year beyond. Yeah, what are your, you kind of obviously been around for 22 years. What are your thoughts on, you know, having seen the, our sport's been mm. lots of highs and lows, but sure. like, what are your thoughts on this one where the tour's being bought not out of, not bankruptcy, out of bankruptcy for the first time? Right. Um, this is... <sighs> I mean, there, there's a trifecta of things that Bally's brings here. It's got property, so we can go and have tournaments with low overhead because mm-hmm. we're not, you know, paying huge permitting fees. It's got media, mm-hmm. is, so we can, you know, have ourselves out there. Yeah, I've been watching NBA games on Bally's Sports. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'm seeing it all over the place That's now. That's sick. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, NBA's on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's basically what Fox Sports w- was. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Fox Sports became Bally's. It's like and the regional sports network. Yeah. And, yes. Okay. I it. mean, in 08, when uh, Shamrock was trying to buy the AVP, that was, we looked upon as a really big thing because they've got media. Now we've got somebody with media and property and, you know, the, you know what really changes the game is the whole gambling aspect. Yeah. Like, the potential of this new revenue stream coming into the sport of people betting on all sorts of things like that's a total game changer yeah. for our sport you know what yeah. would horse racing be without gambling right uh <laughs> i don't think there, there <laughs> right. would be a you know point. a whole lot of interest there yeah um i think it's going to increase interest i think it's going to definitely increase the amount of money that athletes can be paid yeah. um you better pay them enough so they don't start uh, uh, on uh, themselves. Bounce, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, between those three things and, you know, I, I just, I see really sky's the limit for mm-hmm. for beach volleyball because yeah. of those three things. Yeah, and, and you're probably not listening to it as much, but the FIVB, the same thing. We just had the CEO of Volleyball World on, and I feel the same way about the FIVB. Mm. I think it's going in a really good direction. 
Sounds like, we, I feel like there's a lot of work to do now. I was like, <laughs> yeah. damn, I want to do really well at FIVB. Even more so, I want to do better on the AVP if this tour is thriving. Yeah. Sure. And uh, that's just super exciting. Good time it to is. be young and getting into the game. It is. It is. You're still young, Ed. Yeah, I'm acting like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 44 going on 25. 44 nowadays is it. a lot different than yes. 44 10 years ago. We understand our, our bodies a lot better than we used mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Yep. Who's sure. played more AVPs, you or uh, A Rob? A Rob have that claim? Um, I thought he started a, a little earlier it. than me. Oh yeah. Um, he would know. A Rob would know exactly how many. Oh yeah, <laughs> no doubt about that. <laughs> uh, BVB info could tell us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, A Rob, he's funny because there's BVB info kind of before 2000. It's not great. It misses a couple, and mm. so I remember Adam was like, yeah, yeah, they missed this one. Me and Dana played that season. I was like, hmm. all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Rosie, too. He might have a couple more. Okay. Rosie's lucky. He, he probably has less AVP propers, but he uh, got to play in 08, 09 when we had a winter tour, or maybe yeah. it was 07, 08, when we had, like, winter tour, and we had, like, three, air quotes, events per weekend for, like, five, six, seven, eight weeks during the winter where it would be four teams from each gender going to an indoor place somewhere in the Midwest, East Coast, and doing basically a KOB, um, and that was a, quote, AVP event. So he got a bunch of those, um, but those don't really count because it was <laughs> four teams, right? Yeah. I mean, so he might have a slightly higher number than me too. we got to bring back a KOB. KOB Vegas, yeah. like rumor is the tour is going to end in Vegas every year now. Makes sense. Uh, Makes sense. Which, I mean, why not have a KOB? Yeah. I mean, you also want it to like build up, the tour to build up to something big where like the winner is crowned in that. Yeah. And I hope our sport finally has something like that. Like, this is the championship. It's like, oh, okay, so the champions win this? No, it's just another tournament. Just but, mm -hmm. for it. but we says it says champions. Right. I hate that. I yeah. want there to be something at the end where you get a ring or a trophy or like something like you won. You get to go to the Olympics. You won the AVP tour. Get to go to the Olympics. That's speaking of which, interesting. AVP USAV getting together. Yeah. Right. I mean, another big thing. That would be kind of cool if all of a sudden we took back the determination of who gets to represent the U.S. in the Olympics, and. I, I doubt that's going to happen. That's but. the biggest first step, is that collaboration happening. And mm -hmm. I think the biggest hurdle is ha is saying you have to go prove that you can win internationally because a lot of teams have proven that they can win domestically. They can't play with that ball or that style. Agreed. Uh, and we don't, and I agree, we don't want to send that team over there. Um, but at the same time, it'd be so good for our sport for us to be playing for that bid. I like that you that can I'm see very open-minded about that. Right. I'd rather have that, but we just need to figure out a way to make sure that that team is proven on the world tour as well. Yeah. And, like, you're not going to... We, 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 want, we want medals. Like, that's literally why USA Volleyball is doing what they're doing, like, or getting funded by the USOC. Yeah. They need medals. So we have to figure out the balance there, but this partnership's the beginning of that. There's got to be a way. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, good good luck to him making that happen. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, it's it's twelve twenty right now. At what time? Yeah, I gotta I gotta pick my kids up from school like get, one forty. So gotta get an oil change. Yeah, oil change. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, they make appointments for that these days. <laughs> wow, weird. Uh, all the oil stuck on the boats out in front of Long Beach Harbor. Yeah, yeah I'll they, just go they, scoop they, some they up. Rationed it. Um, well, before we let you go, uh, one is there anything else uh, that you wanted to mention uh, that we haven't hit on? Hmm. I can't think of anything off the top of what my head. What about people I'm, that might want to get some lessons or come down yeah. to Huntington? And yeah, volleyoc.com. It's an old, crappy website, but it'll get you to me, and <laughs> right. I'll soup up your game a little bit. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. And they can follow you on Instagram. Yeah, we're running tournaments. I've got one on New Year's Eve. That's a Friday. Uh, got a co-ed unrated in Huntington. So, you know, sign up for that. Also, a youth tournament. Got some uh, sponsors to plug. Pit Viper Sunglasses is hooking nice. me up with some stuff. Oh, That's nice. kind of cool. Yeah, so win yourself some Pit Vipers at uh, that New Year's Eve event, I maybe. I some new glasses this year. My glasses game is it's just getting too vanilla. Who do you mm. wear? 
I wear Maui. I used to wear Maui gems. Okay. Now I'm now I'm open. Open. Mm. All right. All right. I just got Maybe a pair get some of pet um, wipers from a company. <laughs> uh, the swimming company makes goggles. T Y R. They hit me up they too. They reached out and they sent me a new pair. I was like, mm. These are pretty sweet. They hit yeah. me up too. Yeah. My favorite that I've played in is uh, Roca. So you're wearing swim goggles this season. That's what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Well, I live in it. Stafford's old apartment, so an ode to Stafford, right. I'm wearing goggles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but just the single little ones, right? <laughs> Anybody heard yeah. from him? Is he coming back? I because it's funny. Me and Stafford have this connection because I literally moved into his old apartment. That he'll just check in. We'll just check in with each other every couple of weeks. Mm. He's doing well down in San Diego, just living the dad life. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see him play some AVPs though. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, and I think um, he's probably found a way to, to freeze his points, mm. like yeah. everyone else. Did. Right. COVID. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Staff come back. So mm. might be mm. worth uh, sending him a text. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, blocker, blocker. Yeah. <laughs> it's been done before, Ed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good times. Yeah. Great to have you on again, Ed. Glad we could make this me. work. Appreciate you coming up. Yeah. Ed, appreciate having you on. It's always a good time. Likewise. Shoots. Shoots. Shoots.